Shots have been fired, guys. Shots have been fired. In Motion has just, not just, I only found out about this, so I thought I'd share with you about the ultra high performance transforming e scooter by In Motion. Now, for those of you that don't know, In Motion is a really big name brand when it comes to the,、uh, one wheel type scooters. I don't, I never remember what they're called, but In Motion is a pretty big deal. They're not as big of a deal as Segway, but they, Are very well known for their electronic, these things right here. What's it called? I don't even know what it's called. EUC, Advanced Electric Unicycles. I see people riding these things around, bombing down hills like crazy. And I have to wonder if their life expectancy is going to be a lot shorter because they're on these single wheels that basically use gyroscopes to keep you up and running. If for ever, any reason whatsoever, the power cuts out. You're, that's it, you're done for. So, you definitely need all the expensive, buy the best protective gear you can when you're riding these. Now, as you know, I have the Segway GT. I love it and it's great, but there are definitely some shortcomings to the Segway GT. And for those that you don't know, this is a super scooter. I think that they are the most reliable super scooter around right now. And also the most commercialized because look, even Best Buy sells them now. Imagine that, $4,000. But the better deal is to get them through Segway right now. It's on sale for $32.99. It's great. There are shortcomings though. So, one of the big shortcomings, we'll talk about it. Let's jump into the InMotion RS. Okay, InMotion, this is on the crowdfunding. Do they really need crowdfunding? No, not necessarily, but it does get the word out there. And that's the reason why I'm, I'm, share, I'm sharing this with you right now. Hold on, give me one second. So, the InMotion RS is a high performance scooter, of course, a super scooter. What is unique about this is there's a transforming system that allows you to switch its suspension up and down. And hopefully, I, I was just browsing this real briefly. Hopefully, it does this electronically. It'd be not as cool if you have to. Manually raise it up and down, but the fact that you can do it is awesome. So that means you can ride it in a variety of different ways on different terrain, and it's got a 68 mile per hour max speed. That's insanely fast. I almost never want to go at the maximum speed on my Segway, but I also don't do a lot of off roading. Here, I think the legal limit is about 30. I could be wrong, right? So, I'm not a legal expert, but I do believe that you, as long as you don't ride too crazy around where I'm at, the police aren't really going to have any problems with you. But I know that 40 miles per hour is going to be way over the legal speed limit that you're allowed to ride on public roads here. I'm over here in Sunnyvale, California. And that's basically, I'm just across the street from the Apple campus, the big round spaceship type campus. And Yeah, I ride this around. Don't really have any issues. Everyone always comes up to me and asks me a little bit about it. And I guess there's just not that many people that ride these around. So this goes 68 miles per hour. You're going to get some attention riding this thing because it is, I, I, super scooters are huge. It's not something you're just going to casually like, pick up and walk into an office building with. This is something you're going to be rolling. So it's got 4,200. Watts peak output, and that's really only useful really at accelerations for short bursts at a time, but it's definitely higher than my GT2, which I believe peaks out at 6,000. All right, 6,000. And it's got an insane range 75 to 100 miles max range, which basically allows you to, let's say, hypothetically, they, they did, I looked at a map earlier, allows you to ride from Long Beach to basically San Diego. Okay, here in California, it's got an IPX6 waterproof rate, which is better than a Segway GT. And it's got a 50% incline, which probably is going to match what the GT, the GT2 does it have. One, so the major things that it solves versus the Segway GT is one, the suspension. It's probably going to be better over bumps. On a Segway GT, when I go over bumps, it makes a little noise. 
it just rattles. It's annoying. And for whatever reason, Segway knows about this and their engineers are trying to figure out some sort of thing to fix it, but leave it to third party manufacturers to come up with a solution for it. Here's the thing though. The Segway has a double wishbone suspension. It's going to handle very well. In case you do need the nimble, more nimble handling, I think the Segway GT is going to beat this. But this has a transforming system, so you can raise it and lower it as your needs arise. If you're doing off-roading or if you're doing mostly street, you're going to want it lower so you can lower it. And if you are off-roading, obviously you're going to want to raise it higher so you get a little bit more ground clearance. More on that in a little bit. So if you get this, unlike a lot of other Kickstarter campaigns, of which... Sometimes, you know, you back something, it doesn't, you never get it. I've definitely lost money in these cases. There's not guaranteed. But for in motion, I'm going to say it's going to be more or less very much guaranteed, almost similar to the way Segway was, in that they are a really established company and they're well known and they sell a lot of their products. And so they have the guaranteed delivery by in motion. It's going to be available in July or begin shipping in July 2023. Now, sometimes there's delays. Okay, so I imagine by the end of the summer, you're going to be able to get it. I also like that include the shipping and the tax. It's never a great surprise when you back something and then you find out that you have to pay additional import tax, duties, shipping. It's all included. Not bad. I love that. Lifetime customer services and email address. I don't know how I feel about that because I've never contacted in motion i don't own any in motion products i only know that they're really well known and i see people riding them around and they've been around for a while so they i imagine they know what they're doing okay so this is a super transforming e-scooter we talked about the main improvements and benefits of it and i do want to show that they shots are fired guys shots are fired look at this they compare themselves with who they feel they are up against. And let me show you where this is. Obviously, the waterproof rating is a huge one. So if you followed my journey along with my Segway GT, you will know that I've had an issue with that they took care of. Here's the thing though. They said, look, you just this really isn't very waterproof. So don't leave it outside. Don't ride it in rain. Don't ride it in snow. Don't get it wet. Anything like that. I didn't. I have it under cover, but the level of moisture that got into it is probably what led to its ultimate controller or some sort of demise there, where they had to actually, where they actually just sent me a new one, which is great customer service. But at the same time, it's really troubling if you live in an area that is one high humidity, two rains a lot. Let's say you're in Washington, okay, Washington the state, it rains a lot. What are you gonna do? Or you live in a third tropical? I was gonna say third world country. If you live in third world country, maybe the infrastructure is not so great. You need a lot of good weather sealing and you got to worry about rain and moisture, primarily these things. So Motion claims they've got that figured out. And okay, here's the chart. Here's the chart. So you have a comparison between the three different main brands that they're targeting against in the same range. And we're just basically showing you, look, we almost topped them in every single way, right? So 68 miles per hour, top speed, super fast. I imagine that if you go at 68 miles per hour, you're not going to get the 100 mile range that potentially was advertised. My guess is it's going to be a lot less than this. I'm just going to guess it's going to be like 40 miles. That's more than most people want to ride in a day anyway. Max range, 100 miles, of course, is what it says. Segway, 56 miles is top range. I don't think I'm getting anywhere close to that because when I get on the Segway GT, I like the fat. I mean, I like the speed and the acceleration. It's exhilarating. So I'm never going to get that ever, just like ever, because I'm not, I'm just not going to ride it in eco mode and I'm not going to go, I'm not going to granny it. If I'm going to go that slow, I'm just going to ride my regular bike with no power or ride my Brompton. Zero 30 miles per hour. 3.5 seconds. I think the 3.9 is plenty fast for me, but another 0.4 seconds off from 0 to 30. That shows this thing's got some real power. A climb angle, 25 degrees. That's not going to matter to me. I don't do any obstacle courses. Uh, I just ride in urban, primarily environment. And if there are any trails that I happen to see that I am uh, allowed to be on a motorized vehicle, 
Sure, I'll try it out, but this is this really doesn't matter to me. 16.7 degree climb angles. Perfectly acceptable. I don't care. The big one here is the waterproof rating is IPX6. Which pretty much means I could ride in the rain if I wanted to. Not recommended, but at least I don't have to be scared like I do with the Segway GT. And I don't have to be scared about puddles, I guess. I have definitely killed some e-scooters in the past by getting it wet. Or basically taking my hose and rinsing it down. That can kill any of these electric scooters that are not waterproof rated. And IPX6 is definitely much better. The max power output is 8,400 watts. That's really great. It's going to be short sustain and not sustained bursts. Same thing with the Segway GT2. That's going to be short non-sustained bursts. But the nominal power, I believe, is still higher. Like the regular sustained power output is going to be higher. Obviously, that's why that's why the in motion can go up to 68 miles per hour claimed. Battery capacity is a big one. And as you can see, the Segway GT2 is a little bit lower on here, but maybe their cells last longer. That I don't know. We don't know what the expected life expectancy of the battery capacity is. What I can tell you is, I was curious what the warranty is on these. And it's six months for the battery on the Segway. And I guess we'll find out about the warranty for the InMotion. I imagine it's six months or less because they're just going to try to compete. I do like the fast charging time at four and a half hours. That is if you get the optional extra charger. Otherwise, you're looking at nine hours or more. And this is going to be a more faster, powerful charger, obviously, because look at the battery capacity. It's significantly higher. Now, I don't think this is eight hours. I think this is wrong. And the reason why I say this is because the GT2 also has a dual charging option. So if you just do the one charger, it's not going to be as fast. Max low capacity apparently is the same all across the board. I don't, I imagine that it's actually a little bit higher than that, but I think this is just general up to a level. So at least the minimum is 3 to 31 pounds. I don't know anyone that heavy. Maybe you do, or maybe you are. And if that's the case, any of these three are going to be okay for you. Brake type, front and rear hydraulic braking system. Yeah, I have no complaints about the brakes whatsoever on the GT series. I imagine in motion has this down. Front and rear lights, okay. Ambient lights, okay. Multiple drive modes, yep. Shape transforming capacity, that is definitely something that's more unique about this. And it's cool. So the Kickstarter special is $34.99. I believe back then when the Segway scooter campaign... Segway GT, let me see. Segway GT Kickstarter. Oh, it was Indiegogo. Okay, so back then, they have another campaign, of course, about this campaign. Back then, it was, I think, about the same, too. Now I think about it. It's the GT1. It's four grand. Yeah. I guess it's about the same, but there was a little bit of an early bird special. So we're looking at roughly the same. I believe it was roughly the same. So the pricing's roughly the same. This is obviously coming out over a year later. And obviously they made some improvements, increased the speed and the folding dimensions. Oh, this would be interesting. I don't know why. Yeah, the folded dimensions are right here in millimeters. I'm going to have to convert that into inches for myself. But it's also a lot heavier, guys. Because of the battery, right? Either way, these are going to be things that are going to give you potentially a hernia if you try to lift it yourself. I did, and I did lift it myself <laughs> out of the box more than twice because I had to replace, I had mine replaced. And let me tell you, I was a little bit sore after that for a little while. So here's some add-ons if you want some off-road battery, off-road tires, which is going to be great if you are off-roading. The question I have here is, wait a second. Do they come with off-road already? Maybe they do. Let's see, no, those are not off-road. Those, those look like they're slick. Good luck getting these things on. Actually, if you order these, yeah, good luck getting these things on. It's going to take a little bit of work, but at least they sell them. And apparently they're going to be $50 a piece. 
The one thing I advise everybody to get, if you're going to be riding this a whole lot, is to get the extra RS charger at $139. Because if you're going to want these, you know, for whatever reason, when they start selling these, they can never have enough of these accessories. You get it right off the bat, then you're sure that you can fast charge them and get them going, get your scooter back up and having that super range. So with a range like that and a speed like that, this is a serious like motor vehicle replacement. This really is a serious motor vehicle replacement if you can get past the starting price of this. Okay, so that's my quick take on this. Presuming everything is as advertised, now I'm going now we're going to just take a quick look at this little video they have going on over here. All right, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be motorized. If it was going to be motorized, it would have showed it. It just, I think they're just selling it just by showing you this, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be motorized. You're going to have to do it by hand. I'm going to say I like the styling of the Segway GT series a little bit more. I realize that's a lot of that is visual. And here's one thing that I have an issue with right now. And hopefully this does not make it past this prototype where they were showing off what's going on over here. Okay. Beefy suspension there. Right. You can see that. Here's the part of the transforming. Take a look at that a little bit more closely here. Interesting, the kickstand is on the right-hand side versus left-hand side. That is different. I don't care for that. I hope that's adjustable. So you go to, from a deck height of 303 millimeters to 279 millimeters in regular sedan form, and in sports cars, 183 in terms of deck height. There was a section where it looked like the cord was a little bit too low, sticking out a bit. Okay, so this one here, it's a little bit more tucked in. But earlier, when I was looking at the transformation, it looked like, look, it's sticking out a little bit too much. Okay, so I'm sure they'll get that resolved. Hopefully, that's not an issue in all their testing. And I do appreciate that these are regular bars. They don't look as cool. Okay, they're these bars and a handlebar because I can attach my stuff. One big issue I have with the Segway GT2 is it's challenging to attach accessories, such as a phone holder. Which I did manage to do, just things like a phone holder or uh, attachments for other things. Obviously, they don't show them with anything here with them. Okay, so where was it where I saw the cable? Yeah, it's probably a non-issue. This is clearly, these are clearly prototypes that they produced here so you can see here see the cable looks more tucked in here right 
that friend cable. And these cables sticking out like this, I don't really care for. Hopefully they do a little bit more of a cleaner design. Those are all areas for failure. And obviously in this model here, they don't show pretty much any of the cables sticking out like that. Except for a little, no, that's not even a cable either. So it's definitely not, okay, here you go. See, it's definitely not as clean as pictured here. You definitely don't have the brakes showing on the side as well. But this is cool. The fact that it's adjustable here and it's made to be adjustable on these three different, basically here, right here, these three different areas is probably some sort of quick release thing, hopefully, that you can adjust. But I, there might be some other video showing you here. This is the one that I was concerned about. So this is clearly in a more sedan mode or sports mode. Look how low this cable is right here. Look at that. That could easily snag on something and that could be the end of your ride. So I, yeah, that, that's, that part stood out to me. I imagine there, that maybe a zip tie or something might solve that problem. Okay. So that is definitely something that stood out to me. Let me check out some of these comments here. Let's see what we're going on. Receiving at launch. Can't go with my hands. Nope. About the tires. Okay. In order to change a tire, it is necessary to use a professional tire changing tool or visit a repair store for tire replacement. The tire is a standard tubeless tire. And I looked at the specs of the tires. The tires are just as beefy as the ones I have on the Segway GT2, which I'm really happy with. They're really good so far but i don't have like several hundred or thousand miles on my gt2 unlike some people that i've seen on forums who have just really ridden those things down and i imagine it's not going to be fun to replace those tires so let's see they will be okay speed cap you gotta look if you're worried about going past 15 miles per hour in your zone or your area and you think the cops are going to be having an issue with you going past 15 miles per hour? Don't get this scooter. There's many other ones that you can choose from. Primarily, I would recommend from the GT line. 20, 30 mile per hour limits. More photos and video. Yeah. <laughs> $50 off-road edition. Two tires for 100 bucks. Okay. Look like, looks like this came out 14 days ago. And right now you can still back it at the, uh, here's what the price is going for. Please use my link. Okay. If you're going to back this, please use my link. Help me out. It's a little bit of a affiliate percentage here and it's $34.99. They give you the same launch day special. There is no other special. This is it. $34.99, including shipping and taxes, estimated delivery soon. It's in clearly in production right now for this to be able to come over here. Hoping there's no more port issues. You should be able to get this before the end of the summer. If you choose to back it, let me know if you did back it. Let me know your thoughts on this. I'm really curious. And let me know if you had the Segway GT, if you are considering upgrading to this because it solves some of your needs. The one that really stands out for me is the extra range. Don't care too much about the extra power, although that's nice, all right? So the extra range is a big deal. And then you got the waterproofing. That's a really big deal. I didn't think it would be that big of a deal because in California, it hardly rains, except the last several months. We had ridiculous amounts of rain. We were in a drought before. Now we are definitely not in a drought because of how much rain that came down and thus snow that's going to be melting and providing us with a whole lot of rain. So those are the two big things that draw out for me. Uh, but obviously a third would be the speed. Okay, that pretty much covers it all that I can tell from this. And like, maybe like you, I'm going to look at, see what other videos were produced by some other influencers that talk about the scooter. But keep in mind that these influencers obviously are paid to only talk about the positive things. So I guess if you are one of those really cautious people you can very much wait and not back this, but uh, obviously you're not going to get the best price. What is their retail going to be? Retail is going to be $45.99. I don't think so. I think that the retail is going to be less than that. I think the retail might be around 4000 give or take by the time 
how Black Friday comes around. That's my guess. So you're going to save up to $1,000 by backing it now because at $4,000, you still got to do tax and shipping. Doesn't matter where you're getting it from. You're most likely going to have to pay for tax and shipping. And I don't think this is going to show up on Best Buy anytime soon. So you're going to save at least $1,000 if you back this launch day special. You don't already get it yet by September. All right, that's it for this video. Please do a like, subscribe for more. Catch you next one. And be safe out there. Riding one of these e-bikes, e-scooters, or just biking out there. Just be safe. Put on your safety equipment and be careful. All right, thanks for watching.